One of the most dynamic singing combinations to emerge in the early 50s was blues singer Dolly Ratebe, together with the African Ink Spots. The Ink Spots, under the leadership of Philemon Mokosi, performed in shows around the country, had a string of hit records, and appeared in several films. Love is a favorite theme for songs in all languages. But where there is love, there is sometimes jealousy. Listen now to Dibeno Monangawe, which in the Zulu tongue means, I'm jealous of you. Dibeno Monangawe, Kwane Ngoba Songoa, Dinje Dinje Ngoa, Dikalele Beautiful too. They, they sang beautifully. We had Philemon Mokosi. 
he was a great singer. And uh, I really felt honored to sing with these guys. And to see myself sing with the ink spots. Well, I wish I could turn the clock back. It is, it's, it's wonderful. The ink spots are the, the greatest of them all. When Philemon, the leader, approached me, he found me jiving in the hall during those days of the um, jazz maniacs and the Harlem sisters. And he found me jiving and they said to me, can you please come and join our group? Of course, I was still a wild. You know, growing up in the township, you must be a rough. So I think after joining the sports, my life changed altogether. We had one respect for our leader, that's Philemon Mkhose, the late Philemon Mkhose. Yeah. There were shows when he could say, immediately after performing, though there were concerts and dances and all the like, there was a theme we used, peck and go. Then our leader died, Philemon. When he died, we had to stop because now we're groping in the dark because he was our leader and he's the one who used to take all the solos, he was the one who used to, you know, inspire us and we, we, we just hung on to him, you know. So when he, when he died, we got lost. So we had to have a break. Then Matthew came to me after some time, said, no man, look guys, we, we're doing nothing, we're idling. Let's show the people that we can do it without the, our leader, Philemon. <laughs> Matthew Showman Mukhosi took over the group after his brother, Philmon, passed away in 1985. The ink spots all come from Springs, one of the small mining towns that are satellites of Johannesburg. They first recorded in 1948 with a song called Rosie, You Are My Love. People love their unique sound, which was African rather than American. Sadly, white audiences were deprived of their talent Indeed, of all African musical talent due to the racial laws. Their music suffered during the stagnant 60s and 70s when record companies and radio stations overlooked them in favor of local and American bubblegum music. For the last 35 years, Matthew has been working at a lawyer's office in Springs, and twice a week, all those years, can be seen walking to the station where he takes a train to Johannesburg to deliver legal documents. Nobody in Matthew's office was aware of his singing career and only discovered the musical talents of the longtime employee when our cameras arrived at his office. Yeah. Where do you get all your songs from? We compose them. Oh. Yeah, we compose them. So you write your own songs? Right? All beautiful songs. Some of them were love songs, some of them were songs that a person struggles from home. From, from, from urban areas into town, seeking for work, looking for work. Now, that is that. What type of song do you people love to sing? It's jazz, oh. uh, al cappella, all sorts of music, oh. uh, even uh, traditional songs too, we do them. And you are the leader of the group? I'm the leader of the group, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Jacob Rampa and Colin Moore reminisce about the old days with a friend. The life of a black musician in the 50s was often fraught with problems. That would be fine if at all you can meet and have. After you can, let's yeah. have a bottle. I've got a bottle in the okay, house. Okay, okay, buddy. No, Let, it's too hot. Let's quench. The yeah. day we're coming from Woodbank. Yeah. 
Then they stopped us near Welgedacht. Sandra. The, the Sandra. Sandra police station. Police station. Then they said, get out. Where do you come from this time of the night? Yeah. It's morning already. Where's your Nachbas? Yeah. Then we had the Nachbas, but it was written, please pass bearers African ink spots. Yeah. Now this guy says, you got the Nachbas, but it says here, Please pass bearer African ink spot. I want that man out. African ink spot, stand, stand aside. <laughs> <laughs> then we all moved to one side. He said, no, I'm a Tsukiri man. I want this one. African ink spot. You can't be all African ink spot. <laughs> we had to explain. I want the string base. String base. <laughs> Wait. We had to explain. No, this is the name of the group. Yeah. Then he says, oh, so you are a group called African ink spot. He said, yes. I said, okay. Now, what about that one on top of the, <laughs> the, the roof of the car? We said, no, that is a basic. Let the ask come, man. He cannot play. Hey, Jay, come up. <laughs> we said, this, this is the base. And we are so harassed by this. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm no racist, but uh, in my time, we were arrested for sweet nothing at times. You'd get to a show. After the show, it's night pass. I was arrested one night, making Jim comes to Jubik. I was staying with the other boys. I crossed the road to go to, to see Dan Twala before I go to bed. There comes the van and I was arrested. Dolly Ratebe arrested for night pass. For many years, Dolly has been running a successful Shabin, a drinking house in Mabupani. This kept her going during those dark days when talented black jazz singers and musicians were not given the recognition they deserved. Six years, eh? Four lions. Four lions? Yeah. One day they want this, the other day they want that. You yeah. never know with customers. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amalek. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you, you call him black label. <laughs> okay. He's Amalek. <laughs> okay. I think that's all. Oh. Yeah, that's all. Okay. I I'll always respect the Shabi because um, when the struggle was there and we had no jobs at all, instead of turning to the bottle and drinking myself to death, I decided let me open a Shabin because always survival is the fittest of the fittest. I had to sell liquor to survive. Dolly's Shabin attracts a variety of people from all parts of the country. They gather for weddings, parties, or just a couple of beers. In the 50s, Dolly was a well-known jazz singer, film star, cover girl, and pursued by the American-styled gangsters of the day. here for the cover of Drum Magazine in 1952. The story behind these pictures reflects the ironies of the time. The photographer, Jürgen Schaderberg, had the idea of using a sandy Johannesburg mine dump for a beach setting. All went smoothly at the photo session. 
until they were suddenly set upon by hordes of breathless policemen who hauled them triumphantly off to the nearest police station. This innocent duo had somehow been suspected of contravening the Immorality Act, prohibiting sex across the color line. I started my singing career, I think, from childhood. I used to sing a lot at school, at uh, weddings, um, concerts, and all that. But uh, my life really started in 1949 when I was discovered at a picnic by Sam Alcock. And he asked me to get to the Bantaman Social Center. And uh, funny, Mrs. Mutziela was a pianist then for the Mutziela group, but she didn't want to play for me. Because I look so ragged and ragged, you know? A little girl from Safar Town with a swing skirt and techies, I looked so funny. But uh, Jacob Moiketi, that's Kipi Moiketi's brother, thought, okay, he'll play for me, and wanted to know what song am I going to sing. I said, Salt Lake City Blues. That was from Kevin in the Sky. I best that song like nobody's business. And uh, Mr. Don Swanson was so impressed, he thought, Dolly, um, we'd like you to take part in this film, Jim Comes to Jubek. I was so excited. That maybe I can, buy, I'll, after this, I'll buy myself a pair, a pair of shoes because I was wearing tickets, I'd know. All right, I took the part, I played the part of, um, a singer in a nightclub with uh, Daniel Adnuma. The film, Jim Comes to Joburg, made in 1949, was the first feature film made in South Africa about black people. The ink spots then I met in 1948 when we made Jim Comes to They were wonderful. I wonder why I couldn't get married to one of them then. Funny. But we came across Dolly when they were a casting for Jim Kamsi Jobek and at the time she was a big name because she was a beauty queen and uh, she could sing too so obviously she got the lead role in the Jim Kamsi uh, Jobek thing you see. We had to go and sing at the Ritz. There was a lady called Emily Cohen and she sang beautifully. She sang with the Manhattan Brothers and I sang with the Inspots. But we were so powerful I think that is why the Ritz burned down that night. We had the rivals, uh, the Manhattan Brothers, you know. I'm sure you heard about them. Now, as we come from the East Rand, and they were from the West Rand, we used to say, when promoters stage shows, they used to say East versus West. They were good, we were also good. Now, if you, you're fighting for a title, like in the music field, you do the best you can. So they did the best they could. 
But since joining, Dolly joining esports, we went from stress to stress. People are never satisfied about what we give them. That's when they bend the wrist hold. That uh, week, on Thursday, we were with the Black Manhattan Brothers, two stage, and uh, they were with Emily Quenana, and we came with Dolly Ratelli. And then on the Friday, we were all by ourselves with Dolly. That's when they started shooting from the door, and the hall was bent to ashes. The second picture was the Mag Magic Garden. That was made in Alexander Township. That was a comedy. about a chap, uh, a lady asking for an umbrella from his aunt, from her aunt, that she must get a shade. And a good shade then. Bagiru we no yeah. Bagiru as bata sampre. Oh, ja ja, no di ki shade then. Siranta bu. Eh, so siranta bu. Oh, ya se to lua ka ngela mina ga di. Bata la sona siranta bu. Today, Dolly is once again in the limelight and singing to appreciative audiences at home and abroad. She recently returned from London, where she also performed for the British royal family. Her film career is flourishing, with several television and feature film appearances, including her recent role in the remake of the film Cry the Beloved Country. And now, for the first time in her 40-year singing career, Record companies are taking her seriously and recognizing her as the blues queen of South Africa. The African Ink Sports, accompanied by the Zulu band, sing Pula Pulani. Pula Every song must have a message. The voice is mine and the music is in me. We sing our lungs out because our life is fulfilled by singing. Music um, is my entire life. 
music made me to survive the problems, the struggle of apartheid. Without music, I don't think many of us would be where we are today. That lucky old son has nothing to do. Oh, my trouble.